everyone. Welcome to day 12 of the Tumblr 30 day video challenge. This is, uh, as I said, day 12. Talk about your favourite TV show. Uh, now there were two entries, sorry about the loud train, there were two entries in this and it took me about a week once I'd written up the challenges to figure out which one I was going to do. Now I will say I'll hashtag it under this under this uh, under this video. I was going to talk about Firefly, the uh, the ill fated Just Whedon show, um, because I love it. I love the show. I love everything about it. The only reason I'm not going to talk about Firefly is just because the show I am going to talk about actually made it beyond you know a half a season. It didn't. It wasn't cancelled after twelve episodes. Um, so I think purely just for longevity is the only reason I'm not going to talk about Firefly. So instead, I'm going to talk about what I suppose is my favourite show of all time. Uh, I also I also almost talked about Lost, but the ending kind of ruined it for me, um, which I won't get into now. I'll talk about it another day. So my choice for favourite TV show is Battlestar Galactica, the uh, 2001 reimagining. Uh, blew me away. I was introduced uh, to the show by a friend who um, had been a fan of the original series, the, uh, the 1977 series, and had heard rumours of a new show about it being really dark and gritty and lots of really intense characterisation. I remembered the original show. I remembered the ham fest that it was. It was. Just, it was very. The, the original show was just very much a product of its time. Uh, so I did go into it thinking, God, this is going to be awful. Blew me away. First episode, blew me away. I was just completely hooked straight away. Uh, I didn't have internet access at the time, so I used to schlep all the way up to his at Palmer's Green, which is the kind of the other side of North London to go you know, two, three times a week and watch the new episodes. Uh, when the DVDs eventually came out, they were mine. Sold. Uh, for those of you who don't know the story of Battlestar Galactica, it's about a, uh, it's about the last few, I, th I think it's 40,000 survivors uh, of uh, an of an apocalypse. It's basically, you've got a. It's a, it's in a part of a galaxy where there are a dozen or so planets uh, colonized by humans. Um, before the show begins, there was a war between the humans on these twelve or so planets and the robots they created to serve them to be laborers and soldiers uh, to work in you know all the kind of various dangerous industries. And the robots then turned against them, there was a war, then there was an armistice, and the show picks up years later, like, I think 40 years after the end of the war, um, and they come back, the robots come back, there's this massive nuclear apocalypse across all of these planets, and the few survivors, numbering about 40,000, managed to escape in the various ships that they have at the time and the series really just charts how the 40,000 survivors managed to survive, continue to survive um, not only the threat of the Cylons, the robots, who are continuing to chase them but also uh, you know, to forge their own society a really kind of almost, it almost descends into a feudal society uh, where political uprisings and military uprisings and you've got terrorist attacks within I mean this it'd be like the ten people being trapped in a room but they're all intent on killing each other but if they kill each other that's the end of the human race and that's what makes it so dense a story is yes, because it's not just as simple as okay our race has been decimated now we need to band together there are still all of the petty squabbling and the infighting, and everyone has their demons. And uh, even in the, even outside of the humans, the the Cylons themselves have a really 
dense story that's going on at the time that defines their place in this universe and the way all of the characters in the mix and the, the secrets and the lies they tell of themselves and each other and how everybody, I mean literally everybody in the show, everyone is interweaved in a way they don't understand and um, I mean it has a beautiful there's a beautiful ending which I know a lot of fans didn't like. A lot of fans did not like the ending. I loved it personally. A part of me feels that maybe yeah they did write themselves into a corner and they had no choice but to have the ending they had rather than okay this is the ending we chose. A little bit it did feel like okay we've kind of left ourselves with nowhere to go so we might as well just have this ending. But they made it work and I thought it was beautiful. Uh, Ronald D. Moore uh, who's in charge of the series was also the guy who took over from Gene Roddenberry in um, Star Trek The Next Generation who just completely overhauled the entire show and when he took over Star Trek is when I, is when I fell in love with Star Trek again uh, so the fact that he managed to do it this um, it had an amazing cast uh, you can't really see on the cover I mean you've got uh, Trisha Helfar and um, Katie Sackhoff and Jamie Bamba and um, James Callis, who are four of, I suppose, the most pivotal characters in the show. Um, on the back, you've got a few of the other characters, uh, you know, the, the, the commander of the fleet, um, the president of the, uh, of the colonies, um, you've got, you know, kind of the rest of the, uh, the rest of the cast who, I won't go, I won't go into individual names because there are literally about, I think there are about 40 main characters. Um, I mean, it took five seasons and two miniseries to really pull out all of the plot elements. And there, there were some filler. There were some filler episodes that were just, I think, to tie up smaller characters, um, which, you know, you skip over those when you're watching the DVDs. But it just blew me away. It blew me away in the... In the the science fiction of it, the actual the space battles and the flying and the shooting and you know all of the kind of the geek stuff really captured my interest. But the human drama of it really just caught my eye. It was just, everybody was so complicated and so dark, and everybody excuse my language was so fucked up. Everyone was so fucked up. There were no simple characters. Nobody was just black and white of this or that. And, you know, no one was either good or evil. Even the people that they that were demonised all the way through the show were never just evil. Everyone had a reason for why they were doing it, and everyone was conflicted. And yes, yeah, so it brought about a beautiful ending, which did get a bit metaphysical towards the end. But uh, for the haters who came in about season three and decided that. Oh, this is you know. There's a god angle to this show, which isn't cool. If you go back and watch the miniseries, the god angle, or the, the gods slash gods, which if you watch the show, you'll understand why there's that difference between god and gods, um, especially the uh, the series, the the peoples being based on uh, the, the the Greek pantheon of gods, you know, Zeus and Hera and all of those. Um, yeah, those those clues were dropped way back in season one in the miniseries. It's just they were ramped up when the when characters were allowed to have moments of reflection. So you always look back at it, you look back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, you go back and watch the miniseries and then you go through towards season four, four point five, and you see all of the things that they set up. So beautifully written, uh, beautifully acted, very few bad actors and the few bad actors they had either were killed off or did actually by the end manage to gain, you know, some real sense of actorship, if that's a word, which I doubt it is. Um, yeah, so, uh, unfortunately it did spawn um, a prequel series called Caprica, which I didn't enjoy at all, and uh, apparently there's also a prequel series called um, Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome, which uh, documents the war that takes place uh, several decades just before the beginning of the series. Which I'm not looking forward to. I, d I don't like prequels. I really I, I can't stand prequels. I mean, you look at Star Wars. I can't stand the prequels. Um, never look backwards. Always look forwards. Uh, so yeah, that's my that's my favourite TV show. I could I could ramble for you know a half hour, an hour till tomorrow about my show. But as a recommendation, it's time consuming, but it's so 
oh worth it so Battlestar Galactica definitely worth a look if you are on Netflix or you have some kind of rental service or if you have money and go out and buy the DVDs own them own them yourself so yes so this was day 12 uh, I don't know what the topic is for day 13 but as always I'm looking forward to it and I will see you beautiful people then bye